In this video, I'll show you how I bread Vanellope von Schweetz in blueberry cheesecake. So let me introduce you to Vanellope von Schweetz. I'll introduce her to blueberry cheesecake. Hopefully, they'll be compatible and we'll end up with beta fry. Hopefully, Vanellope will prove to be fertile. It's not uncommon for their first spawn or two uh, to drop and not be fertile. So we'll see how it works out. She's healthy. I think she might even be blind in one eye, but she is a healthy fish. She's really a sweetheart, and I, I really enjoy having her, and I'd love to get some spawn out of her and see what happens. See if we can pick up some of that iridescent blue in her fins, and maybe uh, also continue with the Dumbo ears. That'd be really a nice touch. Now this guy's blueberry cheesecake. He's a uh, marble koi placat. He's pretty. Uh, he's a little on the aggressive side right now. He's in a six. I'm sorry, a, a 12 inch cube with uh, six little pygmy quarries and some red cherry shrimp and he terrorizes the tank. You never see any of them. Um, in fact, I'm not sure there's any shrimp left at this point. And after I took him out, I found out that there were there were shrimp all over the place just hiding from him. Uh, this is who I'm going to introduce to Vanellope von Schweetz and hopefully, hopefully between the two of them we'll get a really nice batch of fry. Could be good. So, stick with us here and we'll see what happens. We've got blueberry cheesecake in here in a jar. I put him in this 20 gallon aquarium uh, with about six inches of water in the tank and lots of plants. Uh, there's some java fern float and some hornwort and some Amazon frog bit back there. These sticks I threw in a, an alder cone. That's why the water's so tannic looking. And I'm going to release him into this tank. And after he gets acclimated for a few days, I'm going to put a Penelope von Schweetz in here and maybe we will get a little bettas. And that's the goal. There you go, Blueberry. Enjoy your new home. No more shrimp to eat. No little quarries to chase around. Just you, pal. So I put Blueberry in here yesterday in this 20 gallon um, to start, hopefully, to set up a, a breeding tank for uh, Blueberry and Vanellope von Schweetz. And hoping he would uh, get settled and blow himself a bubble nest and would you look at the size of this thing some I don't know when he started last night or today or anyway it's a beautiful big bubble nest so I think he's probably ready so I think the next step is to go find Vanellope put her in a jar drop her in the tank get her acclimated and then cut her loose and keep an eye on her so I moved the tank into my office where I can keep a better eye on any progress I drained it down to about an inch leaving the plants and blueberry in it. Once I got it placed in my office, I refilled it with the same water that I took out to move it. I added the old glass fish bowl in it, so that's what I'm going to put Vanellope in. That way I can introduce her to blueberry and with a modicum of safety. Um, I left all the floating plants in it, uh, and the wood and the alder cones and everything else, all the mulm that, that's developed that mulm will ultimately create a food source of microorganisms for the developing fry. And then the rocks you see in the bottom of the bowl here are to hold it down. Otherwise, it'll float away because right now the water levels are different. All right, so I just cut blue, uh, I'm sorry, Vanellope out of uh, the other tank that she's been living in. And there she is. And I've got her in this plastic measuring cup. Uh, it's kind of semi-transparent, but I'm going to hang her in here on the fish on the fish bowl and just kind of let the water temperatures collide a little bit. And I don't know how much blueberry is going to actually be able to see her through that, but I'll give them about, give her about 20 minutes in there and pour her into uh, that glass fish bowl, and then that's where it begins. So we shall see. All right, we're back. 
There's blueberry cheesecake himself. And there's Vanellope in this one liter measuring cup. And I'm gonna put her into this bowl. I'm just gonna pour her in. I think she'll be all right. We shall see. And she is in. And none too worse for the wear. You know, I look at her and I think actually she is blind in her right eye. So this is day three. The first day, blueberry blew a little bit of a bubble nest and it's since dissipated. First time I put this tank together when it was still in the garage, he blew a great bubble nest, but it dissipated. I don't know if he's just not ready or what, but I'm gonna go ahead and let blue or uh, let Vanellope out. There's enough places in here to hide, I believe, around this fishbowl and in all this hornwort and in the roots of the Amazon frog bit. And in the back, I got a big clump of java fern. So hopefully there's enough places for her to get lost if she needs to. I just fed them both a, a, a round of blood worms and I'll put some more in and they'll be able to scrounge them off the bottom of the tank. But let's see what happens. I'm gonna put her in and set her to the other side of the tank so he doesn't just go straight at her. I've got rocks in this fish bowl to uh, keep it from floating away. If the water level changes, is that her? No. So one hand on the camera, one on the net. It's never a great success, is it? I'm sure a lot of you have tried this at home. And I don't want to hurt her. And I'm going to put her in on this side over here. So she is in back here. Where is she? There she goes. All right. Blueberry right now is in the other corner. And now let's just hope they don't come out fighting. She's trying to find her way around. She will eventually. I'm showing you the air stone, and I don't know why. There we go. Oh, and here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, they're going to meet in the same water now. Let's see how this plays out. Oops. Hopefully he's interested. And not just interested to fight. He's flaring. Doesn't seem to be attacking her. Teenagers. I'm going to keep a close eye on. And hopefully he starts blowing that nest and they get together and make little baby blueberry vanellopes. There's Vanellope back there and there they both are. So it's just, uh, I'll release her after he gets, figures out she's in here and see what happens. So that may be a while. We'll so it looks like they found each other. Looks like blueberries playing a little hard to get. And it also looks like Vanellope is ready to go. So I'm gonna release her and we will see what happens. The next step will obviously be for Blueberry to blow a bubble nest and Vanellope and Blueberry to get into the spawning ritual. Should work well, hopefully. They seem to like each other. Well, here we are day four. Uh, Vanellope's been out of her fishbowl for two days. Oh, they're flaring. They're, oh, they're doing their whole trip. Yeah, they're showing off, I think, now they know I'm filming. Blueberry started building a nest finally. Um, so maybe we'll get some activity here. He's actively blowing bubbles right now. If you guys can see that, let me come down from above. There he is, he's looking at us because we're looking at him. But there he is blowing bubbles.
So Blueberry's trying to coax her, and she's off. And he's after her. And they're doing laps now. So it looks like Blueberry and Penelope laid eggs. You can see that nest is full of eggs. Let's go from the top two here. I don't want to get too close. And I gotta go find Penelope and get her out of there. She's in here somewhere. So this is a few days later and the first clutch of eggs didn't succeed. I had taken Penelope out and uh, I think Blueberry just, I don't know if they didn't get fertilized, he ate them, they were gone. So now I put her back in uh, again in the fishbowl and then uh, I don't know, waited a, you know, just a couple hours and then took her back out and put her in the tank with Blueberry. And they're laying eggs. And if you look close up behind his head in those bubbles, you can see little like off-white specks. Um, further down the line, um, you'll be able to see them actually draw or mating and, and uh, there will be a cluster of eggs that float up out of that little terracotta pot. Blueberry will pick them up and go up and spit them in the nest and you can see those are eggs on the bottom to those little white specks. And here they go. They are doing their mating ritual. And this is how the eggs get fertilized. And it's hard on them. It's really got to be physically hard on them. But, and he looks like he's just dead. But anyway, so you notice, watch, watch uh, eggs get pushed up out of the pot. See, there goes a couple there. Uh, they, they'd landed in the pot. Second thoughts, I wouldn't have the pot there because it's probably a lot easier for him to fish them off the, the clean glass bottom. And he's blowing those eggs here. Watch him. He catches those eggs and blows them back up into the bubble nest. And he will do that as eggs drop. And as uh, the eggs hatch, it should only take about two days. And the fry, before they're free swimming, will fall out of the nest. And he will catch them and spit them back up in the nest and keep them there until they can be free swimming. And those were some more eggs that had dropped. And there's another one bouncing around back there. And Vanellope is checking out her handiwork and his handiwork. And since they don't have hands, I guess it's their finny work. And she went up and took a gulp of air. Because remember, these are labyrinth beauties. They're capable of actually breathing from the surface. And here we go again. And they do this several times, and they will have quite a big clutch of eggs when it's all said and done. And I'm glad they're not tearing each other apart. His anal fin, Blueberry's anal fins, are really tattered. And there they go. This is something we don't often get to see. It's nice. And look at the eggs fall. Look at the, just she just starts raining eggs. And he's trying like to catch them all and he's gonna put them all back up in the nest. Or put them all up in the nest. They haven't been there yet. But she is still dropping eggs. So next time, that pot won't be in there. But I'm going to leave this tank set up. 
and be able to do it again. In the meantime, I'm going to grow out the fry, assuming there are fry at this point. I will grow out the fry in this tank because of uh, all the plant cover, the mulm. Uh, there's some of that hornwort that's in there that's starting to rot out a little bit and that's a great place for microorganisms to start to develop that the fry will be able to feed off of. Beta fry are really small and uh, they're too small to even eat baby brine shrimp. I'll probably throw in some Hakari first bites, uh, the really fine microfine powder uh, fish food and also uh, I'm growing some Infrasoria or, or uh, Daphnia on the back patio, so I'll put some of that in as well, also. Once I moved Vanellope out of the tank with Blueberry after they spawned, uh, I put her back in here for just a little bit in this fishbowl, and then I ended up moving her back into a regular home in the kitchen tank. And since then, my Cory's laid eggs. And I think you can see those. There's got to be, I don't know, I had about 60 eggs. So I put them in here to hatch. There's all the mulm that was in there. I'm feeding them uh, Daphnia that I'm growing outside and uh, Hikari first bites. But then the big deal is... The baby bettas, and God, they're hard to see. They are so tiny, and I'll see if I can find some here. Uh, there's one. Little bitty thing. He's moving around there. And there's another one. And there's Blueberry. I haven't taken him yet out. i got to find him a new home. I don't want to put him back in that cube because I've put a few uh, glow light tetras in there and he will terrorize them as well as terrorizing his old buddies, the, cor the dwarf uh, pygmy quarries and the shrimp. So we'll just find him a new home where he's a little more solitary. But anyway, there's loads of little tiny, little itty bitty tiny um, beta uh, fry in here. So I think that worked out really well. So I can't wait to see what's going to come out of it. Some are really small and dark and others are only slightly bigger and we've seen some that, that look almost white. So maybe some of uh, there we go, maybe some of those platinum Dumbo ear jeans will come through and some of the marble koi jeans will come through and some of the others and maybe we'll get some really interesting mixes. So we'll see. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I also hope this inspired you to give this a try yourself. It is really a simple project to do. Um, and, and it's really fun. And it's especially fun when you get little tiny fish out of the deal. Look at that. Those are, yeah, okay, those are the, the quarries back in there, but there's also uh, the little bed is swimming around in here. So anyway, do me a favor, like and subscribe, and I will come up with something new to post next time. Thank you again for watching.